Is Sabbath keeping mandatory for Christians? Today, we're going to be discussing whether or not Sabbath observance is taught or given as a command in the book of Acts. And we've got our special guest back on today who's going to be giving arguments for this. Well, I will admit you've had some pretty good points about the Sabbath in our past discussions, and it's caused me to do some more research. But also, in Acts, we know that Paul kept the Sabbath. He always went to the synagogue every Sabbath. Paul could have met with them the other days of the week, but he waited until the next Sabbath in observance of it. And the scripture records a total of 78 Sabbaths that Paul met with the Jews. Don't you think that's pretty clear right there that Paul was keeping the Sabbath? So if the Apostle Paul kept the Sabbath, it shows that we are to observe the Sabbath today. So in this video, I'm going to show you that throughout the book of Acts, there is not a single command or instruction to keep the Sabbath, nor is anyone chastised for not keeping it. Furthermore, Paul is never recorded as keeping the Sabbath himself. Instead, and here's a key point, his emphasis was simply on preaching the gospel alone to the Jews and others who met in the synagogue on the Sabbath. And here's another key point. In Acts, every connection with a Sabbath meeting was in a Jewish synagogue and never a Christian setting. And the one exception is where they prayed with some Jewish converts by a river in an area where there was no synagogue. And here's another key point. Whenever Paul would go into a new city, it was always his method to go first to the Jewish synagogue and reason with them from the scriptures, then he'd get beat up and kicked out and go to the Gentiles. And last, we're going to see in our study today that it's in the Jewish synagogues where the law of Moses is read every Sabbath. And make note of this because where was the Sabbath command given? in the law of Moses. So it was read in Jewish synagogues only, not in Christian settings. Very important point. But before we get into Acts, let's remember what Paul said about how he conducted his ministry. And this is a very key passage to understand since Paul lays out how he operates here. To the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, though I myself am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so as to win those not having the law. To the weak, I became weak, to win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that by all possible means I might save some. So we can see that Paul's saying, look, within the limits of God's word and my Christian conscience, I'll be as culturally and socially Jewish as necessary when I'm witnessing to the Jews. And he's also saying here that although he's not bound to the ceremonies and traditions of Judaism, since all those elements have been removed, but he is still under the law of Christ, which is the law of love. And with the Gentiles, Paul's not suggesting that he violates God's moral law, but as he explained, that he's not lawless toward God, but that he abides to the law of Jesus. Which again is the law of love, since the entire law is fulfilled in love. And make note of this, the law of love also excludes the Sabbath, since there's nothing loving or moral about taking a day off work. And so Paul's just explaining that within the bounds of God's word, he would not offend the Jew or the Gentile or those weak in understanding when he was witnessing the gospel to any of them. And so keeping this passage in mind, let's dive into the book of Acts now to see whether or not Paul kept the Sabbath. Okay, before we jump into Acts, let's ask ourselves a couple questions. Are there any direct commands or specific instructions for Sabbath keeping? Or is anyone being chastised for not keeping it? So here's our first passage where the Sabbath is mentioned in relation to Paul's ministry. And it says that he starts his message, which goes through verse 41. And it's very obvious that Paul's entire subject matter here is not the Sabbath, but instead it's the gospel of Jesus. Now, Paul does make a reference to the Sabbath here, but again, this is just a quick reference, not a command, since the subject matter he's discussing 
is not even remotely related to the Sabbath. And we see this consistently through Acts, where the Sabbath is mentioned, but there's not a single command or instruction to keep the Sabbath. Just quick references that they were meeting, 48 and 49. At this word, the Gentiles rejoiced, and the gospel spread through the whole region. It says the Jews then caused persecution against Paul and Barnabas and drove them out of their area in verse 50. And again, no command or instruction to keep the Sabbath. And again, here's the key point. These Sabbath meetings were held in Jewish synagogues for the benefit of a Jewish congregation. They were not meetings of Christian believers. And we see this all throughout the rest of the book of Acts whenever the Sabbath is mentioned. Paul was ministering the gospel to them where they were at. He wasn't going to tell them to meet at the synagogue on Sunday or any other day, since obviously the Sabbath was the only day when all the Jews came together at the synagogue. So he's meeting them where they meet. Is Paul promoting Sabbath keeping by simply ministering the gospel to Jews on the day they all met together? On the day the Jews came and met together. Clearly not, since there's no command anywhere throughout the entire book of Acts, or even the entire New Testament, to keep the Sabbath. Let's keep going. Acts 16. Paul and his companions found several Jewish converts who met for prayer by a riverside, and it happened to be on the Sabbath. So no command to keep the Sabbath here either. Next, Acts 17. It says, according to Paul's custom, he went to them for three Sabbaths. Since it was Paul's practice or custom, wherever he was at, to go to the Jews first and preach the gospel. And we don't see the author Luke or Paul even allude to the Sabbath as a command or even give an instruction about the Sabbath. Chapter 18, and this is just a survey through Acts. We want to make sure that we're not leaving any stone uncovered and cover every passage about the Sabbath. And it says that he was reasoning in the synagogue every Sabbath and trying to persuade Jews and Greeks. So persuade them. Persuade them about what? About Sabbath keeping? Nope. Once again, just reasoning with them through the scriptures in an effort to witness the gospel to them. The emphasis is the gospel, not the Sabbath. Whenever he reasoned with them on the Sabbath, it was simply an effort to preach the gospel to them. And for you viewers who are Adventists and transitioning Adventists, as you can see, this is just a very weak and pitiful argument that since Paul preached the gospel on the Sabbath, that therefore he must be promoting Sabbath keeping. And let's keep in mind that we have to just take the Bible for what it says and not try and insert something else in there that's just not there. And here's another perfect example of that. 1811, some have tried to use this passage to prove Paul kept 78 Sabbaths while in Corinth. And to do this, they read verse 4, which says that Paul was in the synagogue every Sabbath. Then they read verse 11, which states Paul stayed in Corinth a year and six months. And every Sabbath for a year and six months equals 78 Sabbaths that Paul kept. However, a careful understanding of this passage makes it very clear that this argument is incorrect. First, every Sabbath cannot refer to the whole time that Paul was in Corinth, since verse 7 shows that Paul was forced to leave the synagogue and go to a house next door. So he reasoned with the Jews in their synagogue only three weeks. He did stay there a year and six months, but these facts alone don't support any sort of Sabbath keeping by Paul. In Acts 19, we have a similar account of Paul's ministry both in and out of the synagogue. And this was when Paul was forced to leave the Jewish synagogue where it's assumed that he met on Sabbath. But it doesn't say the Sabbath here either. It says he was meeting with them daily. And circling back to chapter 1, and not that many try to use this one as a Sabbath observance argument, but just to make sure we're covering it all and show you that this teaching of Sabbath observance in the book of Acts cannot be found. So here, Luke, the writer of Acts, is describing how far the Mount of Olives is from Jerusalem by just using the term a Sabbath day's journey. And I want to wrap up this discussion with chapter 15 because... I want to show you how ironic it really is to try and prove Sabbath observance is being taught in Acts. This is the Jerusalem Council, which Acts 15 alone disproves Sabbath observance. So to try and use Acts to prove that the Sabbath is binding 
really backfires on that whole argument when you get to chapter 15. So in Acts 15.21, this verse mentions the Sabbath in connection with the Jerusalem Council. And the context of this verse is the final decision of the council, which stated that the Gentiles did not have to keep the law of Moses. Rather, they were only required to abstain from things contaminated by idols and from fornication and from what is strangled and from blood. Then follows this verse, For Moses from ancient generations has in every city those who preach him, since he is read in the synagogues every Sabbath. And you might be asking yourself, well, what's the significance of the fact that Moses was read every Sabbath? Well, it's very significant, and let me show you why. It's because this passage makes it very clear that these Sabbath meetings where Moses was read were Jewish meetings. That's what it refers to them as. So the Sabbath was given in the law of Moses, and this chapter is saying that the church is not under the law of Moses. So Adventists, transitioning Adventists, you can see very clearly that this is a false teaching that Paul kept the Sabbath. And the reality is the book of Acts actually teaches the opposite. It teaches the law of Moses is abolished which means the Sabbath is abolished also since it was part of the law of Moses. So Adventists, it's time to leave this false church. There's not a single command throughout the entire New Testament to keep the Sabbath.